How are you feeling? John Riggs here talking about some great games from Tecmo for the NES. We're going to cover all 15 of them in this video and we're going to rank them along the way. Tecmo, cool company for the NES, some great games on it. Half of them are like sports games, but we're going to cover all of them. And you know me, I'm a huge old school gamer and I love doing other videos too, so make sure you're subscribed. I do at least two videos a week. Kicking off with Bad News Baseball. Believe it or not, a super awesome baseball game, right? This is, this, this is one of the better ones, in my opinion for the NES. I just love it. I just, uh, it has a cartoony feel to it. I'm sure it came out of something else in Japan. Uh, it just feels good. It just feels like a good game and it's easy to control and, and I love it. And believe it or not, I'm putting this Bad News Baseball for me, who's not a sports guy, who can't throw a ball to save his life, who can't hit a ball because my terrible depth perception, I'm putting this game as an A. Because we're going alphabetical order, the next one is called Fire and Ice. Kind of hard a game to find nowadays. Now this game's labeled as Solomon's Key 2, and Solomon's Key will show up later on in this video. And this one I like. Um, it's one of those games, it's a puzzle game, and I love puzzle games for the NES, but it's one of those games that starts out super easy until it gets like super hard, like I can't figure it out. <laughs> well, it has all these fires, and you have to put it out with the ice. And you can create ice bridges, ice blocks, um, but you can only do it kind of like to the um, to the platform below you and to the side, which is a really weird place to put it. It's yeah, um, it's still it's still a fun puzzle game though. So if you like these kind of puzzle games, I think you're gonna dig it. Um, and I'm, I'll put it as a B, only because it gets like ridiculously hard. Like it gets to the point where. Like, if you could just create an ice block in front of you and then push it, then that would be fine. But, uh, of course that would defeat the purpose of the game, I suppose. That <laughs> makes it make it too easy. Mighty Bomb Jack's one of these weird games where I still can't figure it out today. I'm sure there's something that I'm doing wrong. Um, but when it goes through, like, just the regular stage part, you, I, you can jump around and jump on things and get items and all that, that's fine. Uh, and then the final stages, the final rooms of each level have these bombs that are like, Un, like, activated, and I think you have to pick them up in order or something like that, but you, you don't have to. But maybe you do and something happens, I don't know. Um, it's a game I've tried to get into, can't figure it out. I'm putting it as a D. Ninja Gaiden's a game that a lot of people pronounce weird. It's one of those games where like, someone says, oh hey, have you played Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, Nin I don't know. There's, it's what happens when you put Japanese words. <laughs> to, an, to an American title, and <laughs> you don't know what to do with it. Um, it's awesome. Um, everything about it, the, the platforming is great, uh, the action is great, uh, controls are tight, um, the bosses are fun, um, and they all have a pattern, so if you can recognize the pattern, you can uh, do yourself a lot better with this game. Um, it's, what, it's, it's one of the better NES games. Um, and it's a game I've still never beaten. I've come close. Um, and I, without, you know, without a Game Genie, I've never beaten it, I should say. Um, so I've never beaten it. <laughs> it's awesome, it's an S. Ninja Gaiden 2 is more the same. And is it better? I put it on the same level. I think it's I think it's just as good. It's just as good. Yes, you know, the graphics and sound and stuff like that may be better, I guess, uh, to an extent, but controls are still tight. It's awesome, it's great, I love it. Um, and it's also an S. And then there's a third one, Ninja Gaiden 3, and I love it. Controls are tight, <laughs> it's awesome. The graphics may be a little bit better, the sound may be a little bit better, but it's still a great game. And I love it, and um, it, it's also an S. <laughs> Unprecedented. Um, I like all three of them. And I've never beaten any of them. <laughs> That's how much I love them, oh my goodness. Rygar is pretty tough to play today. Now if you grew up with Rygar, might remember it. Pretty fun. You can jump on the enemies to stun them. You can have your weird, weird saw shield attack thingy that you have, which is uh, completely awesome. And then it goes into like this kind of overworld. So I, I wouldn't call it Metroidvania, but it's kind of like that, where you can go other places and then go to like an overworld map and then go somewhere else and use the grappling hook over here to go somewhere else. The controls aren't the best. Uh, the <laughs> it's it's pretty difficult, but once you get the hang of it, um, I think it's a lot of fun, and and I like it today because I grew up with it. If you're if you've never played it before in your life, and maybe you didn't even grow up during the NES era, you'd probably look at it and be like, I tried and I'm out. As like I it's you know it, it, you probably, you'd probably even think it was great for its time, uh, but not great for this time. And I. I liked it. Different than the arcade version too. This is one of those, you take the arcade version, which is linear, put it on the NES to give it more exploration, uh, more stuff to do, game lasts longer. I'd appreciate that. Um, I liked it okay, but I'm still gonna put it as a B. Solomon's Key is another classic, classic NES game 
that I could never get into. Um, I wanted to. I love puzzle games. Um, I think it's the block mechanic because it, you know, you can create blocks and not create blocks and. I don't know. It was one of those games that they really... I, I want to say they kind of hyped it up a little bit back in the day. Um, I just... I don't know. I couldn't get into it. Uh, it's a D to me. Star Force was one of the first NES games I remember purchasing with my own money. You don't know how big of a deal that was for me. I mean, it's so big of a deal I remember it today. Um, it was at KB Toys and Hobby in the Yakima Mall, and it was $19.99 on sale because they were liquidating them and they had to get them out of stock. And this was back when Nintendo games, for the most part... 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, and here's a game for 20 bucks. I have $20. Oh my god, I have $20 plus tax. I can make this happen. I bought my own NES game. This was big news for me. This was proving that I would soon have the ability to buy my own games. And it was okay. <laughs> but I bought it with my own money. It was. A, it's a decent shooter. It's a, it's a decent... There were much better shooters on the NES. It was decent, and it's a C. But the memory lives on. All right, we have Tecmo Baseball. It's an okay baseball game. I prefer Bad News Baseball over this one. Um, this is going into the Tecmo Sports series now, where they have Tecmo Baseball. It plays different, because it plays um, kind of like Bases Loaded, where you're over the shoulder, which makes more sense, because that's how it looks when you're watching it on television. It does, it really does. However, it's as far as baseball games go, uh, I mean, I didn't care for it as much. Um, great sound in it, great great sound chip in it, um, but just didn't care for it as much. So I'm going to put it, oh, I'm, I'm putting it as a D. We have Tecmo Bowl. Um, it's an S. I mean, how can you not put Tecmo Bowl as an S? It's, it's a, I don't care for football, but it's a masterpiece as far as football games go because it was a game that I could play, I could enjoy. I loved playing this game, I still do today. And it's an NES game, and it was just easy to control. I loved the fact that you could choose your plays, and, you know, um, depending on the button combination, you didn't know what your other person was going to do unless you looked at their controller, <laughs> or you try to anyway. Um, it's wonderful. It's an S. Oh, yeah. It's kind of one of those, if you put Tecmo Bowls in S, you got to put Super Tecmo Bowls in S as well. Uh, there are people today still hacking Super Tecmo Bowl to make it with updated rosters each and every year. And I love that about this game. And this was and this was a game that actually had Seattle in it too. Tecmo Bowl did not have the Seahawks, but this one does, so gotta love that. If you love the Seahawks, of course. I'm a Washington guy, I gotta choose for the Seahawks, I guess. Well, this game is called Tecmo Cup Soccer Game. It sounds like a bootleg, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, this is their soccer game, but doesn't play like a traditional like NES soccer game. If you've never played this game before, it's worth checking out at least for a moment, because it plays kind of like, there's like RPG elements in it, kind of. Um, where you kind of dribble down the field, and then like, oh, here comes a person. What do you do? Do you pass? Do you kick? Do you go for the goal? Uh, you know, and you, you play strategically that way. Uh, very cinematic for a soccer game. Um, I'm sure this was um, something, you know, and maybe I would have liked to have seen this more in other sports games, but I've only seen it for soccer games, um, and not including like some tennis game that came out for the TurboGrafx-16. Unfortunately, if you're like really into like high action packed soccer games, this may not be the game for you because you can't just, you know, pass to the other person and shoot for the goal and all that. Interesting enough. Um, I'll put it as a C though. It's just interesting. It's fun to look. We have Tecmo NBA Basketball, which was a licensed game. You could play as your favorite sports team in this game. And it doesn't play great. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's like you're trying to do something and it never works to your favor <laughs> in this game. I'm sure it's great and uh, the licensing helps. Um, but still, I'm, I'm putting it as a D. Tecmo World Wrestling may be the best wrestling game on the NES. It might be. Uh, of course, I do love pro wrestling, and we didn't have a lot of great wrestling games growing up. It took a long time for us to have actually a decent wrestling game. And this was probably the best one, I think, for the NES, uh, just based on, you know, I mean, it had like multiple characters, multiple moves. Uh, you could do your little weight training before to get some, um, you know, extra strength points or something like that. And I don't show it in this video, uh, but once you get the other opponent weakened down and you do your finishing move, it goes into a cinematic, which I thought was super cool. I loved it. And even though I put pro wrestling as an S in my NES black box video, I'm ranking these amongst themselves, not amongst every Nintendo game out there. Um, so for me, because of this and on this list. I'm putting it as an A, but it's a solid A. It really, really is. It could be an S. It just has a couple of quirks that don't quite put it to that level, to me, in my opinion anyway. But uh, to you, it certainly may be an S, and I, I wouldn't doubt that at all.
And that's my list, and I'd love to see yours. I have a link in the description below on how you can rank your own Tecmo games. If you happen to post it on social media, make sure you tag me in it. I love doing these ranking videos. I've already done so many of them from so many other companies. So make sure you check out some of these other videos while you're still here. And I'll see you again real soon. Always new great games, always new great videos coming out soon.